Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah Alhamdulillah alladhi a'fana ana al-adha we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has protected us from harm and who subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to protect us from harm. Walhamdulillah. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins and bless us to become obedient slaves of his because obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a shukr so we need to learn to be truly grateful to Allah and it's so easy on our tongues to think that we're exemplifying thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying alhamdulillah, by praising Him which is some of the highest form one of the highest forms of worship is a dhikr Allah azza wa jal making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but remember a higher form of dhikr is a dhikr qalbiyya meaning that you are making dhikr not just on your tongue but in your heart that you are exercising this ibadah qalbiyya you know this worship in your heart and that's showing tr true gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is true gratefulness to Allah azza wa jal is a dhikr a qalbiya. and so when we become truly grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thanking him on our tongue and our hearts and having true shukr by exercising that thankfulness and that gratefulness on our limbs That means doing righteous deeds. That means ta'atillah. That means our ibadah should increase to show that we're gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not simply that, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray, I fast, but then we're careless in those duties. Or that you pray and you fast, but you still do major masiyah, major disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is not showing thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is not showing the muhabbat the muhabba the love the adoration that you should have for Allah azza wa jal and that's why I wanted to remind myself and my brothers and sisters to be thankful to be thankful for what you have and show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obedience to Him, by being gratefulness, uh, by, by showing gratefulness, by being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by doing righteous deeds. <coughs> Increasing your thankfulness to Allah Azza wa Jal. Serving your parents more, praying sunnahs more, sunnah more, giving more charity, feeding the poor more supplicating more and supplicating for others more these are ways we can show our gratefulness and all the various ways of showing gratefulness and thankfulness all the ways of charity by sharing sharing our time sharing our our, our wealth and our property if we can giving gifts and just doing general 
kindnesses that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah Because it is so easy for us to forget how far the intention goes. For example, now under the situation with the coronavirus spreading rapidly around the world, we see, we find the restrictions in our prayer that we cannot go to the masajid for those that love to frequent the masajid. Or we have to go to the masajid much less and exercise precaution and hikmah, wisdom, and tawakkul. We have to rely and put trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the fact that you're prohibited from the masjid, you will still get the same reward of praying in the masjid if your niya was, was to go to the masjid. If you, the whole thing that prevented you was because of this, the restrictions with the virus, the concern for spreading or catching this disease, the harm. This was uh, uh, taking the Looking at the masala and the mufasid, the harms and the benefits, that there is a perhaps a greater harm by being in the masjid because of the spread of this illness, that you could either get it or you can uh, give it to others, and for the general overall health of the community. So because of that greater maslaha, that there's a greater benefit by being out of the masjid in this cir these uh, circumstances, but you have the intention to be in the masjid. Your heart is there. This is the only thing preventing you. Then you'll be rewarded by Allah So it shows us the importance of the intention. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the Ma'mal of Niyat, verily actions are tied to the intentions. Verily actions are tied to the intentions. So as a reminder to myself and my brothers and sisters, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much, often, and show this gratitude through amma, through righteous deeds, and exercise wisdom and precaution, and rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I want to in this last point about a tawakkul, as I mentioned, because some people seem to understand, I've noticed uh, a difference. Two masajid that I still am frequently fre uh, frequenting occasionally, a couple of prayers a day. One is very far, miles and miles and miles, 20 miles away, whatever, because I have business out there. Another is very close. And I notice the one that's very close to me, they don't make that. The only statements I've heard related to this sickness is put your trust in Allah. And I don't see that they're hardly changing any of their routine, nor do I see that they're exercising the kind of precaution of, uh, you know, with clean, cleanliness, having uh, wipes, doing things like this. I see things go on as regular. And I heard the Imam say something about tawakkul. But to walk Allah as we learned it, as we learned it from the scholars of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and as comes from the Salaf al Salih, Ridwan Allahi alayhim, that some of them they define the, this concept of to as itimad al Allah wa fi'l asbab, meaning to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take action. So, how would that fit in relation to the coronavirus? That means that you take some actions to protect yourself. If it were warranted to wear masks, then wear masks if you have the ability to do so. If not, if you can wear gloves, or at least, probably mo most importantly, be cleaning with the wipes, cleaning the doors, and you as an individual have wipes in your vehicle, on your persons if it takes it, cleaning your hands, before and after going into the masjid or even during in the masjid if necessary so that way you're not touching you're not spreading you don't know one person could have come in one time 
and spread uh, the virus on the carpet or on the door or whatever the case may be. You are taking precautions because we live in this world and this tawakkul is is it demand all Allah wa fi'l asbab it is relying putting your trust totally in Allah and taking steps so that means by cleanliness you're taking the steps appropriate steps then it demand all Allah then you are putting your total the end result with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's where your trust is. That's where the heart is. The heart is not in those wipes and in the cleanliness saying, Oh, I did everything. Khalas, I'm finished. La. The etimad, the heart, the qalb, is where you're putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you've taken the steps of cleanliness and hygiene. And then you are putting your trust in Allah that you hope that you don't get the disease. And you know that this disease in this bella, this test, is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And perhaps a punishment from Allah Azza wa Jal. So, therefore, the Muslim is taking precautions. As they say, tying their camel. They are tying their camel. They're not just having camels and saying, well, I'm trusting in Allah, let my camels wander in the desert. But rather they tie, you tie your horse, you tie your camel to make sure it doesn't wander away. And then you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning your heart. You want to get married. You don't say, I just want to get married. You make no steps. You don't look for a spouse. You don't get the means if you're a man to, to, to marry. You don't look you know, for a rizq. But you sit in the masjid or you sit on some rocks and you just say, well, you know, I want to get married. I'm making to Allah. Maybe my spouse is going to come out of these woods. Maybe she's going to river raft up this stream and come to me. La abadan. Tawakkal ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making the effort. Making the connections. If it's through the, uh, the uh, websites or whatever. Or talking to people. Talking to people in your community. Talking to people outside your community. Making effort. Striving to get married. Putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the heart but make an effort. If you want risk, you want your wealth to be increased. I can't sit on these rocks and just pray and hope that money's gonna fall, it's gonna be helicoptered in. But rather, I have to make effort. You and I have to make effort. We have to defend ourselves from shar, from harm and evil, and put our hearts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.